you see the signs, caution, don't go, beware, don't swim, don't fish, what can be the cause of all the shenanigans? Thick, toxic algae blooms. As you can see here, this is Florida. This is our, uh, this is our beautiful Gulf Coast right here. Um, over the course of my high school, high school years, uh, I studied a lot of marine biology. And uh, we also did help with cleaning the lake next to our uh, baseball field. We also, I also conducted um, a research uh, on oysters and green mussels and which ones clean water more. We also did a lot of fish trawling, a lot of fish counting after algae blooms have uh, had hit us, um, trying to compare and contrast the numbers before and after an algae bloom happened. Um, as a Floridian, you, you do see that we have a lot of pleasures. Um, we have a lot of the beaches. We got a lot of the marine life. These turtles are actually from um, the National Marine Sanctuary in Key Largo. As Floridians, we also do a lot of fishing. We also do a lot of eating and seafood here. So um, I guess we're pretty spoiled when it comes to the ocean. <laughs> For my specific purpose today, after listening to my speech, you, my audience, will, will know the effect and cause of harmful algae blooms and identify them as a major problem. And we will also see um, what actions are being taken and actions you can participate in to prevent and or facilitate an algae bloom outbreak. But to begin with, I mean, some of you may ask yourself, what is an algae bloom? Um, according to EPA.gov, an algae bloom is a buildup of a toxic nuisance algae that causes harmful impact to natural resources, marine life, and humans. Um, blooms can lead to mass fish kills, but before I get to that, let me just uh, review my main points. Sorry about that. Um, today we're going to review the magnitude of uh, algae blooms and the effects of them. We're going to also observe the origins of uh, HAB um, um, harmful algae bloom outbreaks. And also we'll see some solutions we can um, you know, do to uh, kind of combat them. Okay, where I left off. Blooms lead to mass fish kills. This is here in uh, New Jersey. This is the shore of Jersey. Um, according to the biologists there, these fish suffered from um, suffered from lack of oxygen. Usually when an algae bloom hits, it covers the ocean surface, not letting light uh, you know, hit, hit the plants, leading to uh, plants not being able to give oxygen to the fish. This uh, bird here, uh, biologists also say probably passed um, from eating too much toxic fish, toxic oysters, um, and, um, and that, um, that stuff. So what creates an algae bloom? Um, as you can see, um, algae blooms occurred over 200 years. Uh, they've been occurring our, our whole lives, um, even before we were present here on Earth. But the human uh, impact, the human influence has grown significantly um, since uh, the 90s. Um, just to kind of give you a um, heads up, 85 toxic algae blooms have been recorded. 37 of those 85 live in our Gulf. According to the FWC, the Florida Wildlife uh, Consolation, um, in their article, A Primer on the Gulf of Mexico Harmful Algae Blooms, these algae blooms affect oceans, estuaries, lakes, bays, and lagoons, and they occur several times a year. Um, here um, we can see a runoff. Uh, marine, biolog marine biologists call these runoffs because uh, usually a farmer will spray their field with a lot of uh, fertilizers, and uh, and when it rains, um, the water then kind of collects all those fertil uh, all the fertilizer and kind of pours it on, and then. I mean, everything um, you know goes to the ocean, as you may be aware. Um, this is what they call a non-point source, a source that can't be really located at times, um, a source that uh, isn't really seen that often. In, a, in an article to uh, in an article, um, oh, I'm sorry. In uh, in fact, in NBC News has reported many of these uh, non-point. Uh, Sources and in fact, uh, last year they reported that a Home Depot had left fertilizer outside of 
outside of, um, of, of the, the building, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of customers wanted um, to get a complaint about that. They didn't the fertilizers out. Okay, so for some of my solutions today, uh, knowledge and awareness is one of the biggest ones. Um, here, uh, on a lot of the bags of the fertilizers, on the back, it'll, it'll have uh, information on how much uh, fertilizer you should be using. Also, it's, it's nice to identify um, um, sources or canals that can maybe lead to an, uh, the ocean and make sure that no one's dumping. If you ever see anybody dumping uh, trash or fertilizer in the ocean, it's, it's always good to notify somebody. Um, as far as technology, um, NOAA, the National Administration, uh, Oceanic Administration, um, has stepped up with their technology. Here we have uh, satellites in the sky that will track uh, a buildup of algae from outer space. We also have buoys that will uh, look at the tide and, and, and see the difference in the tide. Uh, we, they have um, under um, underwater um, underwater pinpointers that will, or sensors that will uh, that will kind of uh, alert people of the discoloration in the water. Um, and. Uh, also, uh, NOAA has also um, estimated a, um, an $82 million fee for, for, um, for algae bloom outbreaks that the government has to pay in order to clean up the water. So this is just a bit more magnitude for you folks. Okay, um, so, uh, so in closing, I just want to I just want to elaborate again and, and emphasize again that as Floridians, we have a we're really spoiled with the ocean and everything it has in it. Um, but just remember that it is our responsibility to uh, protect our, our mother, um, the source of life, uh, our Gulf of Mexico, and uh, its neighboring waters.